I'm Lizzie Nopo, and today we are going to do something a little bit different from my usual content. So, last week I started my Life is Strange series, and we just finished up episode one. Well, in Life is Strange, there are uh, journal entries that update as you play through the game. And I wanted to include these in the original episodes, but they are pretty lengthy, and I know that there are some people out there who don't like reading the journal entries or hearing them read. However, these journal entries do offer a lot of insight into Max's character and the backstory of the game. So I figured I would put them into their own episodes, so that way people who are interested in the journal entries can click on these videos and hear them read out and, you know, enjoy them. And people who aren't interested in them can just see these videos and go, no, no thank you. I don't want that. Get it out of here. Jeeves, take it away. I don't, I don't know why I don't know why they're rich. Those who are interested can watch. Those who aren't interested can, you know, just just shove it under a rug and never even acknowledge it exists. Because they update as you go, there are spoilers for the chapter. If you haven't watched the episode 1 videos, I would suggest go watching those before you continue on with this video. Either way, let's just get into it before I keep rambling. Shall we? July 10th, 2013. I got accepted into Blackwell Academy! If words could dance, this would be a rave. Even though I've never been to one. But who cares, because I got into Blackwell Academy! I didn't think I would be so excited since it's not like I didn't used to live in the same town. But when I saw the text from the Blackwell Scholarship Office, I could literally feel my pulse speed up. I thought it was going to say, sorry, thanks for playing. It took me a few seconds before I read the whole thing. I guess I wanted to enjoy that last moment of blissful ignorance. And when I saw the first word, congratulations, I think I screamed. My mom cried and my dad laughed. They're so weird. But they're happy and this means extra financial support because they don't have to pay anything to Blackwell. This means new clothes and, if I can work it, a new laptop. Oh, and I have to keep telling myself, in caps, that I am going to Blackwell Academy. August 18th. 2013. So this is it. I'm leaving Seattle to go back to Arcadia Bay. Usually people go to the high school closest to home. I suppose I am too, it's just that I haven't lived there for five years. Out of all the best photography programs in the world, I choose to go to the smallest back in a town I was excited about leaving. Maybe I wanted to come back all along, just to see if Chloe and I are still even friends. But I do wish Chloe could have moved with us to Seattle. That city was made for her. When we would play pirates in our rooms and in the woods, it seemed like Seattle was that fabled, faraway island of treasure and adventure that we were always seeking. With coffee shops. Added bonus. But Seattle wasn't like a fable. Au contraire. Now Blackwell Academy seems more exotic to me than any other place in the world. To study photography under Mark Jefferson? Ah, <sighs> insert hearts and flowers. Plus there will be cool, diverse students from everywhere. It won't be like my high school now. I never really found a groove with my classmates. Or boys. I'm lucky I have a couple great friends here, but it's time to ship out. So maybe Arcadia Bay will actually turn out to be the island of treasure and adventure I've been looking for. August 25th, 2013. Shit is crazy here. With a K. That K is very important. I didn't realize how much crap I had to pack until I had to pack all my crap. Mom and Dad are getting a little too excited I'm clearing out my room. Though I caught Mom crying when she was packing my shirts. That made me want to cry like a little girl. And never leave Seattle. So instead of packing, I feel like burning all my clothes than just raiding a thrift store to build up a new Max wardrobe over my junior year. Not that I even have an old Max wardrobe. Nobody will know me except for Chloe and who knows how different we are now. So I can cut my hair, get a tat and some piercings, maybe date a cute foreign exchange artiste from Paris or Rome. I can do anything, unless I get busted. And there'll be so many super cool chances for my photography to get exposed. The thing about that is when I get scared but excited, and then I don't feel like crying at all. I get tingles down my arms sensing the universe opening up for me. I can't wait to leave. I just want things to be different at Blackwell. September 2nd, 2013, 12.07 a.m. 
My first entry from my new dorm room the night before my first day at Blackwell. Whew, I haven't had any time to write or even take pictures since I got here. My shit is in boxes all over the room, which is small, but mine, and I never want to leave. I can't wait to decorate. I plan a whole wall of photos. I did meet some of my dorm mates, though I suck at remembering names, so I won't bother right now. But I think I can already see who's going to be cool to me and who's not. It's a bitch trying to get settled into a new school and social scene after I finally found good friends in Seattle. But I'm here now, and this is the start of my new life. Sweet dreams. September 3rd, 2013. Blackwell sucks ass! I told myself not to whine so soon, but damn! The day started like Christmas morning. I barely had any dreams because I was so pumped to start my first official day of my new life. Like a dork, I couldn't figure out what to wear, so I chose what was on the floor. I'm no good with names and faces right away, but I picked up some names like Kate, Brooke, Taylor, Alyssa. And how could I forget Victoria Chase? Rich, stylish, entitled. All I could feel was instant judgment when she looked at my raggedy ass clothes. As if I'm at Blackwell to strike fashion poses. Maybe I'm being extra crispy sensitive, but I think Victoria wants life here to be like her own reality show. Ugh. So that wasn't fun, along with my general social unease. I thought it would be easier being back. Call the Wambulance! I don't want this day to end all woe is Max. It was incredible to walk across the green campus in the morning mist. I love the stone steps and brick walls of Blackwell. Everything is a picture waiting to be taken. Speaking of, at least one great thing did happen today. Mr. Jefferson's photography class. <sighs> There's more to tell, but journal, forgive me. I'm truly wiped out. September 4th. I have an ass load of homework already. So much bullshit. At least give us noobs a day to acclimate. But to prove I'm not a total loser, I made a new friend in my science class. His name is Warren Graham. And he's a serious geek. Plus, he's dark and witty. He comes across as kind of a know-it-all. But it turns out he does kind of know a lot. We talked about photographers, and he actually named a few I'd never heard of. We traded numbers, and he'll be a good study partner. Or a good friend. I'll need at least one based on the click action here. I thought being 18 meant I didn't have to deal with this teenage drama anymore. I thought. At least I get to research famous photographers for some of my homework. Mr. Jefferson assigned us a ton of reading, but this is exactly what I want to study. Jefferson is super cool and super chill. He doesn't try to be too hip, just says what he thinks and expects us to as well. I think he's a genius. OMG, I want to marry him. Just joking. This one class is worth all the social dysfunction. September 15th. Homework is kicking my ass. I bet the teachers grade harder just to stop you from feeling special. But Victoria Chase and her snob minions still front like they're honored guests of Blackwell. The bros here aren't that different. Nathan Prescott is Victoria's male clone with way more money and attitude, if that's possible. His family is the oldest in Arcadia Bay, and I heard stories about them when I was a kid. The Prescotts give a shitload of bank to Blackwell, so Nathan acts like he literally owns the school. Yesterday, during class, he put his feet on the desk, started texting, and the teacher didn't say Jack. I'd get suspended. But him and Victoria are part of the silly elite vortex club that puts on popular parties and so they get their way. It's good to be the king and queen. I don't want to slam everybody. I do like Kate Marsh. She's down the hall and in one of my classes. She's so pretty and sweet and friendly. It makes her more beautiful than the biatches here like Victoria who think beauty is just your face and outfit. See, I'm already playing their drama games. No more! September 23rd. Finally had a chance to take some actual shots around campus today. A perfect blue sky day. I always forget how great I feel after I take pictures when I've been slacking off. Speaking of pictures, Mr. Jefferson told us about the National Everyday Heroes photo contest he wants us all to enter. The winner gets a trip to San Francisco and lots of publicity. He wants just one photograph from each student. This is exactly why I wanted to come to Blackwell and of course I'm scared shitless to enter. At least I have a couple of weeks before the deadline in October, so I have plenty of time to stress and procrastinate. <sighs> September 30th. I don't know whether I love it or hate it here. I'm trying to keep up with my science class of all things. 
like I give a shit or even understand it. Good thing I know Warren. Too bad I can't clone him to take my place in class. Miss Grant is much cooler than the class. She explains particle physics so even boneheads like me can kind of understand. I love how she relates society to science and vice versa. I can tell she's committed and passionate about life. Unlike some of us in her class, but I'm trying to engage more, even if it means asking actual questions in class instead of hiding in the back. I'm just glad I'm not the only social misfit here. Now, how much homework are you avoiding? October 1st. October, my favorite month. The best weather of the year. I love watching the leaves change color, turning into tiny flames. But it's still too damn hot. Thanks, global warming. And I can't bust out the big coats and sweaters or scary movies yet. Soon. Can't let me borrow The October Country by Ray Bradbury. I haven't read much by him, which caused Warren to almost revoke my geek cred before I held up my copy of Battle Royale, but he nails the autumn atmosphere of small towns. The last time I wore a Halloween costume was with Chloe. I have pictures in one of my old albums. I should find a real Halloween party to crash so I can experience some social mingling. It's that or a Vortex Club Stroke Fest swimming party. Or is that a Backstroke Fest? You so punny, Max. Oh god, she, she, she says puns even in her journals. At least I'm trying to climb out of my cocoon. I shouldn't expect my life to completely change after a few weeks of Blackwell Academy. As my parents love telling me on a loop, you have all the time in the world. October 7th. This will be the weirdest journal entry I will ever make. So weird, I don't know how or where to start. But it started with the most vivid dream of my life. I was lost in a storm by the lighthouse until I came to the edge of a cliff. Then I saw a giant tornado headed for Arcadia Bay. It was so real that I could feel the rain stinging my face. I was scared shitless. Then a boat hit the lighthouse and I swear I actually felt like I was going to die. But I woke up in Mr. Jefferson's class and I wasn't even sleeping. I almost fell out of my chair. Jefferson called on me, but I totally blew the answer. Of course, Victoria pounced on me and made me look like a bigger idiot. She's so awful. Then I didn't have the guts to turn in a photo for the Everyday Heroes contest while Victoria did her usual suck-up to Jefferson. He's so cool and he clearly wants me to succeed. I felt so shitty. I just wanted to get to the bathroom to be alone and wash my face after that nightmare. Or daymare. Once I got to the bathroom, I saw this odd, beautiful blue butterfly flutter in. And right when I took a photo of it in the corner, Nathan Prescott came in freaking out, talking to himself. I hid in the corner and this punk girl came in and they started arguing about drugs and money. Then Nathan actually whipped out a gun and shot the girl. This is where it gets strange. When Nathan fired the gun, I came around the corner and reached out for some dumb reason, as if I could stop the bullet. But suddenly, I could feel the world twisting around me and this pressure in my head. Everything seemed to rewind and I found myself right back in class at my desk. I literally thought I had been dosed with some drug until I calmed myself down. I saw everything happen in class the way it did before. Major groundhog deja vu. Somehow I was able to actually rewind time. I knew the only way to find out if I was having a breakdown was to go back to the bathroom and see if I could save that girl from Nathan this time. I had no idea how either. I just knew I couldn't live with myself if I let her die again. I escaped Jefferson this time by knowing exactly how to answer his questions and rushed to the bathroom. I hid in the corner again and I couldn't believe it when Nathan showed up, freaking out all over again. Then the girl came into the bathroom and before Nathan could shoot her, I smashed open the ancient fire alarm and scared both of them away. Victory! Until I got grilled by the security chief, David Madsen, who thinks he is Chuck Norris, Blackwell Ranger. Nathan Prescott almost kills a girl in the bathroom, but no, I'm the problem. I was so glad when Principal Wells stepped in to shoo David away. Then I made the possibly fatal decision to inform Principal Wells that I saw Nathan waving a gun in the bathroom. I didn't think I should mention the girl or my new rewind abilities for obvious reasons. He didn't want to believe me and almost made me feel like shit for telling him that Blackwell's most big fucking deal student would carry a firearm to class. I couldn't tell him that he actually killed a girl in a previous timeline. So my school day started with an apocalyptic dream 
then ended with saving a life and discovering I have some kind of power to rewind time. I don't know how to top that. Everything feels so surreal right now. I can't talk to anybody about this. Well, the only person I could, I haven't seen in five years. I could confide in Warren. He's smart and knows science, so maybe he could even think of an explanation. Though I have no idea what that could be. Until I can figure this out, I better stay on the down low with this stuff and focus on my classes. Warren sent me a text asking for his flash drive back, even though I haven't had the chance to check out all the cool shows and films on there. I watched a few episodes of Doctor Who and X-Files, binged on Full Metal Alchemist, then Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, all kinds of Amazon women black and white badassery, Tetsuo, a total cyberpunk trip with amazing visuals, and Scott Pilgrim for about the millionth time. On a side note, I saw a missing persons poster on campus for Rachel Amber, a pretty Blackwell student who vanished. It's so sad to see her smiling face and think about the awful things that could happen. If there was a way for me to rewind back six months, I totally would. I had to go back to the dorm to get Warren's flash drive, and yes, Victoria and her Vortex vixens blocked me from getting in, and even took my picture. It was so high school movie, I can't believe she did it. She actually told me to go fuck yourself -y. Though, it was funny. I don't know why she has to act that way. She already has everything she wants, doesn't she? And she forced me to use my rewind until I finally came up with a way to get her out of my way. I don't want to use this power for trivial bullshit, especially if I have been given an actual gift from the universe. But it did give me a chance to test it out. But I felt like shit seeing Victoria sitting there by herself on the steps covered in paint. She didn't look like the Queen Biatch of Blackwell, just a lonely girl as confused as me. I knew I had to find out if she was okay. She was actually nice and apologized. She even deleted the picture she took of me on her phone. So maybe there is hope for the future. More high school drama. Julia wouldn't let Dana out of her room because she thought Zachary was sexting Dana. So stupid. I was so tired from everything and since Dana borrowed Warren's flash drive, I had to intervene. Juliet told me Victoria was the one who gave her the inside scoop on Zack and Dana, so I knew that Victoria was playing them all. I snuck into Victoria's room and onto her laptop and found out that she was indeed lying through her ass just to create drama. Of course, I felt like a weasel going through Victoria's room and laptop. Once I gave Juliet the proof that Victoria was behind it all, I went to get Warren's flash drive from Dana. She was in a weird mood, but we said nasty things about Victoria and I think it definitely made her feel better. We talked about Warren, and Dana implied he likes me. You. I'm starting to get the hang of this whole rewind thing. I don't want to waste this power, but there has to be a reason it was given to me, so I better learn how to use it right. I started by saving Alyssa from getting a football-fueled headshot. I admit it felt amazing just to help Alyssa with something as simple as that. I also saw David Madsen hassling Kate Marsh. I couldn't hear everything, but he was accusing her of something. All that guy can do is point fingers. I got so pissed I went over to stop him from being such a bully. He's a security guard, not a stormtrooper. He was an asshole, as usual, but I felt good about what I did and Kate seemed truly happy that somebody stood up for her. And I did that without using my rewind power. This day keeps getting stranger. I don't even believe what I'm writing. I can't even do a simple task like giving Warren back his flash drive without getting into a situation. In this case, though, it turned out half bad and half good, which I guess is the yin and yang of life. When I met with Warren in the lot and checked out his new retro wheels, guess who showed up? Nathan Prescott, freaking out all over again. He got all up in my face to accuse me of bullshit. Even though I was scared because I knew what he did to that girl in the bathroom, I was more furious. Then the girl in the bathroom pulled up in a truck. My former best friend, Chloe Price. We both looked at each other like, what the fuck? Next thing I knew, I was in her truck as Warren earned his man guard and tried to get Nathan off my ass. I owe Warren big time. Seeing Chloe for the first time in five years was such a shock I was almost paralyzed. Especially after realizing that Nathan had almost killed her right in front of me. Now Chloe shows up out of the blue to save me. Of all the bizarro and unexplainable shit happening today, sitting in Chloe's battered truck listening to music and staring at her dashboard bobblehead might be at the top. So I tried to process the fact that Chloe and I were two best friends who didn't know each other anymore. She had blue hair, piercings, and cool boots, and I... I looked like a dork. I didn't know where to start, and she wasn't exactly extending an olive branch. So we sat like strangers. 
At least I had time to catch my breath and realize that in the parking lot melee with Nathan and Warren, my camera got busted up. I didn't care considering everything else going on, but it sucked on top of everything else going on. Going back to Chloe's old house for the first time in five years was like the ultimate rewind. Some things were obviously different, but some things weren't. The house smelled exactly the same as it did when we were growing up. Chloe's room was like an exploded version of her new adult self, cool and chaotic. I could tell she was pissed. She wanted to blaze up and chill, so I explored her room to play catch up on what she was into these days. Then I found a photo of Chloe with Rachel Amber. Chloe freaked and laid into me for not calling her once. I deserved it. She had become best friends with Rachel and they were going to bail on Arcadia Bay and head out to Los Angeles for fame and fortune. I could tell how much Chloe cared about Rachel since she was the one putting up the posters. I felt even shittier about leaving Chloe alone all those years when she needed me. You suck, Max. But Chloe is obsessed with Rachel, the missing girl. She says Rachel vanished after meeting some amazing dude. Probably some psycho online. Chloe wanted to smoke out and be alone, so I went downstairs to find tools to fix my camera. Snooping deeper, I hit the paranoia jackpot and found a whole mini surveillance setup of Chloe's house, with cameras in the halls and some rooms. Truly creepy shit. What kind of uber paranoid puts cameras throughout his own home? Chloe's stepfather, I guess. I see why she's got serious attitude. When I got back upstairs, I couldn't fix the stupid camera. But Chloe saw the butterfly photo and knew I was in the bathroom and set off the alarm. Her attitude totally changed and she realized I had saved her life. Even though it could have gone the other way, she was so happy, like when we were kids, and it was great to see her face light up. She even gave me her dad's awesome old Instamatic as a symbol of our reunion. She cranked up the tunes and started dancing on her bed like a maniac. She even got me to shake my booty. Just a bit. That's when Chloe's stepfather showed up, and it was David Madsen. I had to hide in the closet, and then David came in, angry about the music. He was even scarier off campus because he didn't have the school around him. He accused Chloe of taking one of his guns. Then shit got real. David found Chloe's joint and flipped out on her. I couldn't take it considering she almost died that morning and I stepped out and said it was my weed. David tried to threaten me, but Chloe was awesome and threatened him. He backed out of there quick. Chloe was so touched I took the blame. Of course, she did steal one of David's guns and waved her around like an idiot. Too much firepower for this girl to encounter in one day. Or one life. Fortunately, Chloe and I decided to get out of there and catch up on our exploring, like best friends. So Chloe and I ended up at the lighthouse, watching the sunset. Chloe was mellow and told me more about David and his uber paranoia at school and home, and it all made sense. But I wanted to know why Chloe was in that bathroom with Nathan Prescott. She told me he deals drugs and she wanted to blackmail him to pay off some big loan. It's so strange where our lives have gone since the last time we hung out when we were 13. Then I had another nightmare, or duskmare. I was right back at the lighthouse in a storm, except this time I was following a ghostly deer until I got to the edge of the cliff. I could see the tornado destroying everything in its path, and again I could feel the cold sting of the rain. The lighthouse was crumbling and I felt so helpless watching the tornado move towards the town. Then Chloe snapped me out of the dream and I told her what I saw. And as if to make the day end on another unusual note, Snow started falling from the sky in the warm sunset. It felt so weird, ominous, and beautiful all at once. Especially standing there with my best friend. And on that positive note, I have officially earned a great night's sleep. Thank you guys for tuning in and making it this far. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this little bit of a departure from my norm, and I hope I'll be able to keep doing them. My voice is a little untrained for reading this long, but... I'm glad to be able to do this. But I do find these journal entries to be pretty intriguing because they offer a lot more insight into Max and the story as a whole. And they also have like the neat artworks and stuff like that. And so I didn't want to just not acknowledge this part of the game because I think it's a pretty unique aspect of the game in itself. But regardless, I'm going to leave this here. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and I hope that you guys have a great day. You know, please let me know if you like this type of content, because I would be open to doing this for other games. So please do let me know with a comment and a like. You know, let's, let's me know what you guys like to see and what you guys want to see more of. 
with all that being said, I'm going to leave this here, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Life is Strange. Take care, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!